Hey, Chris, looks like you already got started. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? All right. Yeah, well, the first thing we do in an energy audit is we start with all the things that use energy in the house. Mm -hmm. So we start with the appliances upstairs, we start with the lighting, make sure everything is running efficiently, and we also check out the heating system, the water heater and the heating system itself. All right, and so what have you found out? Well, the lighting upstairs are mostly CFLs, which is good, low, good. Wat low wattage usage, yeah. and the appliances are all Energy Star rated, so those look great. Perfect. So now we just need to check out the heating system. So we've got a hot water heater right here. What are your thoughts? What have you found? Well, it's about five years old. It's a standard atmospheric 50-gallon uh, uh, tank. Yeah. So it looks pretty reasonably efficient. Yeah, five years old is not too bad, but what about this beast right here? Well, that's about a 20-year-old steam boiler. All right, and yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Well, the reason these are so inefficient is because the water has to get up to at least 212 degrees in order to create steam, yep. whereas forced hot water only needs to get up to about 180 degrees. Right. So generally, the steam systems are, are less efficient um, generically, but this one's old. I mean, specifically, how inefficient do you think this is? Well, we're about to find out. We're going to do a combustion safety test to make sure that everything is running efficiently. All right, let's test it. I'm using a combustion analyzer to measure the temperature as well as the ratio of flue gases inside the pipe in order to determine the efficiency of the steam boiler itself. Now I'm going to drill a hole in the flue to measure the pressure to make sure it's drafting properly. I'm also going to use a smokestick to make sure that the exhaust gas isn't spilling back into the basement. All right, Chris, test results are in. What'd you find? Well, it's running safely. It's drafting properly. Efficiency-wise, it's running at about 83% right now. How do you feel about 83%? That's pretty reasonable. Uh, 80 to 85% is the standard range for an atmospheric steam boiler just like this. All right, so we're right in the middle. But we could get a more efficient system in here, right? Right. If you converted the system to a high-efficiency hot water boiler, you can get up to 96% efficiency. Yeah, well, that's going to come with some cost, though. So what, what do you recommend? Well, for now, I would leave it as is. Generally, they last about 25 to 30 years, so I would stick with the system for now. All right, maybe find some other place where we can save some money. All right, let's go check it out. All right, let's go upstairs. So now we're going to evaluate the shell of the house. We want to see how well the house keeps in all that nice conditioned air. Mm -hmm. Every house leaks to some extent. It's just a matter of where it's coming from and how much air is actually moving. Okay, so a blower door test it looks like. Right, and uh, it's basically a giant fan that depressurizes the entire house. Yeah. And that's going to exaggerate all the leakage points throughout the house and see how how well it keeps in that air. All right, now we've closed all the windows, we closed the garage door, those types of things, so we're sealed up. Right. So this is the basement door here. Mm -hmm. And you see with my smokestick how much air is being moved from the basement. Wow. So that tells me there's a lot of air coming through the penetrations in the basement, like around the garage door, the rim joist, the uh, vents that are behind the addition. A lot of leaks down there that we're going to want to seal up. Right. So another big point of air leakage is the chimney. And you can see even with the damper closed how much air is being moved. So that means in the winter you're going to be losing a lot of heat through the chimney. So another way we can look for heat loss points around the house is with an infrared camera. Mm -hmm. And that shows us where the temperature differences are in the outside wall. Yeah. So you can see where the window is, where the cooler blue uh, purple areas are. And then as you move around the room, you see the inside stuff, it's yellow or orange, it's warmer. All right, and what do you see on the wall? And the wall itself, you see right next to the window, there's a, a bay between the studs. Yeah. There's plenty of insulation right there, it's a warmer color. But right next to it, there's a cold spot. And so you're saying, it, you're thinking that we've got, what, full insulation right here in this bay? Right. And what, either no insulation or what, poorly installed insulation over here? Exactly. And that's a big temperature difference. Right, it's about 62 degrees versus about 69, maybe 70 degrees. So it's almost a 10 degree difference between the two bays. Well, that's gotta make a big difference in your comfort level. It definitely will. And you can see how sensitive this camera is. You can still see the handprints on the wall. Wow. So another big point of leakage is gonna be the pull down stairs to the attic. Right. So if you look at it with the infrared camera and with the fan still blowing, we're gonna be able to see the cold air being pulled out through the edges. I mean, I could see the blue, but I could also see wisps as if the wind's blowing exactly. right through there. Well, the fan's still blowing, so you can see it pulling out the cold air. And the temperature difference? It's over a 10 degree difference between the inside and out. Just a big hole right through the second floor. Right. Okay, what are you finding up in the attic? 
Well, now that we have the floorboards up, we can get a good look at the installation here. So we've got fiberglass bats in the joist bays, and how deep are these bays? They're about six inches deep, mm -hmm. and at the time when the installation was installed, it's probably about six inches or an R19 insulation value. Yep. And what do you think it is now? This well, stuff is pretty far gone. It's so degraded now and compressed that it's probably around an R8 or 9. So 19 down to an 8 or 9. Right. And, and ideally, what would you like it to be? Well, for new construction code today, it's an R38 or 12 total inches. So we got a long way to go. And how would you get 12 inches of insulation up here? Well, first we take out all the old fiberglass because there's so many air gaps in there we can't insulate properly. Mm -hmm. We take out all the flooring in the attic and then we'd add 12 inches across the surface. So just pile it up until we got to where we needed to be. But they've got a lot of storage up here. What if they wanted to keep using the attic for storage? Well, then they'd have to build up the frame another six inches so that you can fit the insulation underneath. And then we could put the, uh, the plywood on top of that. All right. right. Anything else you see up here? Well, whenever we do any insulation work, we want to make sure that we're air sealing first. Mm -hmm. So wherever the air is leaking from the living space, we want to seal that nice and tight especially around the chimney chase here. Yeah, look at the size of this hole, right? right? It's almost a three inch gap, and if I shine my flashlight, I can almost see straight down to the basement. So we've got a chimney of air coming up around the chimney itself. Right. How do you seal this? Well, we use fire rated flashing as well as fire rated caulking to seal that nice and tight, and then we can insulate around that. Okay, now this is a pretty big hole, but we've got smaller holes around here, I'm sure, because I've seen some electrical wires come up probably a plumbing stack too. Right, especially where the interior walls meet with the attic, we want to seal those nice and tight with expanding polyurethane. Then we can insulate on top of that. Okay, so that's sealing, but we've got a gigantic hole right here, although we need it, so we can't have a permanent seal. And it looks like you've got a solution right here. Yep, this is an attic stair cover. It's made of rigid foam board or polyisocyanurate, which is a higher insulation value than fiberglass alone. Okay. That's weather stripped around the bottom, so it'll make a nice tight seal. So when these stairs are up and not in use, this just sits over them like this and that makes a nice seal. But when you've got to get access to the attic, stairs come down, hatch goes up. And right. We've seen these before and they're actually very effective. Very. Hey guys, you're almost done? Yep, we're all done. I found a long list of opportunity for you to increase the overall energy efficiency of your home. But um, don't worry, I'm going to write up a comprehensive report for you so we can talk about what you should prioritize. But I'll tell you right now, your biggest point of heat loss is coming from your attic. You should insulate and air seal that. Well, great. I really appreciate the help that you guys gave me today, and I'm looking forward to reducing my energy bills in the winter. All right. Well, Chris did all the work, so nice job, Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You know, a proper energy audit, particularly with a blower door test, is really the greatest way to understand what's going on inside that building. Where is the heating and cooling that you paid for leaving through the building? Oh, and there are some great tools out there right now. I mean, infrared technology, how powerful is that? It's really a great tool to, for us to really understand who's hot and who's not. Uh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> no. But it actually lets you see inside the walls, and that's really great. Now, once you have that blower door test, it's going to make this infrared cam work better, and it also will make the smokestick work better, because you're under negative pressure and you'll actually see uh, where the leaks are. Wasn't it amazing how much air was coming through his basement door? Mm -hmm. It is amazing, but that's when you want to start tightening up those leaks. Air seal the house and then insulate. Yeah. Air sealing simply caulking foam for the big gaps. Rigid foam and fiberglass insulation makes a huge difference. If you have a fireplace, they have these different sized balloons that you can use. Stick it inside your flue, inject, uh, blow it up, and it'll conform to the flue yeah, size and one? stop a lot of the air. That's a good idea. You know, a chimney is a really big hole in the house. You know, yeah, right? negative <laughs> pressure. How do you get an energy audit? Well, you know, in most states, they're programs that are run by the utilities, so it starts with a call to that program. They're oftentimes free, and the great thing is you get that list back, it's prioritized, and sometimes the remediation work is actually subsidized as well. It's a no-brainer. It's great. a great place to start. Great. All right, well, until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Tom Silva. I'm Rich Trithui. And I'm Roger Cook. For Ask This Old House. <laughs>